There are tons of Destiny 2 videos out there hyping up how good heliocentric QSC is, but there's a secret to why it's so good. Today I've got specific PvE damage and PvP numbers that go below the surface of TTK values and show you how heliocentric is the sidearm for players of every skill level. This is a deep dive. Lightweights have been my favorite class of sidearm since before Witch Queen dropped, and Helio is personally my favorite sidearm I have ever used in Destiny 2. While I'll still do all my normal god rolls and perk recommendations at the end, timestamps in the description, the heart of this video is going to be how Heliocentric, a sidearm that was inadvertently nerfed through the Crucible body shot changes, has become so popular. Yes, you heard that right, lightweight sidearms were even better when they were being slept on as they used to be able to have one of its five shots be a body shot against Tenrazil. With the body shot changes, it now takes all crits to hit optimal TTK, while other types of sidearms, like Drang, have stayed at the same requirements for their optimal. So how the heck did this thing become one of the top 10 weapons in Trials of Osiris, even topping Drang, a sidearm that's craftable with more range and a faster optimal TTK that hasn't wavered between updates? I believe the answer will help you understand what roles you're looking for and how to use the heliocentric QSC sidearm. Now sure, you could speculate which streamer or YouTuber talked about a weapon and got it so popular, but at the end of the day, there are going to be concrete numbers behind how fast you can slay with it and how it feels for you. Notice how I said for you, and that really is the core of this video because the reason this sidearm is so popular and universally good comes down to three things. One. Heliocentric is the sidearm for every kind of player, two, it's new, and that one's complicated but we'll get to it, and three, it's got the perks. So let's break those down. Number one, Heliocentric is the sidearm for every kind of player. This is key. Low skill, average skill, high skill, there is a consistency between them in PvP, and the numbers I'm going to go over showcase how the bar is set low for you to perform really well, but the ceiling is extremely high if you can perform with excellence. PvE is going to follow this same theme when we get to it, but let's talk baseline, TTK, and PvP first. The optimal time to kill is a competitive 0.67 seconds. That's good, but also pretty middle of the road for a sidearm. At surface level, it falls short compared to the much easier to control Drang, which has an even faster 0.6 second TTK and can do it in only 4 crits all the way through Tenrazil. Helio needs 5 crits and is still a slower TTK. So let's go deeper, because while comparing optimal is useful, nobody actually plays the game at that level. Nobody hits every crit every time, because if we did, everyone would just be using the fastest TTK weapons for every situation. Like high impact pulse rifles, which can hit a 0.67 second TTK across the map through Tenrazil. You're punished if you don't hit that two burst. There's a balance. And so we're going to look at something called accuracy adjusted TTK. The folks at Destiny Massive Breakdowns added a section for this in their spreadsheet before they all went to work at Bungie. And I've taken that formula and added the updated sidearms to it. The results for heliocentric were mind boggling. Now, I knew lightweight sidearms had a lot of forgiveness before the Crucible update. They let you miss a lot of crits and still hit a great time to kill value. But I thought they were going to lose a lot of that with the body shot changes. At first glance at the updated spreadsheet, my fears even look to be confirmed because once you miss one crit against the Tin Rizzle Guardians, lightweights become the slowest out of all the sidearms in Destiny 2. But this weapon is so good, what, what is going on? We've gotta go deeper. We dig just a little further and see how much accuracy you need for those 6 bullets. Only 50%. Let me translate that. This means that whether you are 90% accurate with your headshots down all the way to only hitting 50% of your shots as headshots, you will hit the same 0.83 second TTK. And oh my gosh, just look what happens to all the other sidearms at 50% accuracy. Drang now requires a full second, 1.0 TTK, while lightweights and aggressive burst sidearms become hands down the fastest, unwavering from that 0.83 seconds. I mean, Heliocentric is out here still competing with the Summoner and Prosecutor while they're hitting 100% headshots. 6 crits for Prosecutor, 9 for the Summoner, and Helio is only having to hit 50% with 3 headshots and an almost identical TTK. Now what that all means is you can significantly screw up with Heliocentric and still be competing with the top weapons in the game. This also creates a sort of consistency in your time to kill that you can rely on whether you're hitting 90% of your headshots or only half of them, making Helio feel reliable in a wide variety of engagement outcomes for top players. 
and feel strong for players who don't ever hit that many crits anyways. Now this will of course be limited by sidearm range, but I will cover that in the rolls to go for at the end. But let's take that skill range even lower. Let's look at the very bottom, 0% crit accuracy, which I want to remind you, even good players do. This is even crazier. And speaking of crazy, I want to thank all of you for the incredible growth specifically this past month. All the new subscribers, all the interaction with the videos, I appreciate every one of you. Okay, 0% crit accuracy. Alongside precision frames, lightweight sidearms like heliocentric are now the fastest body shot sidearms in the game. Potentially the fastest legendary primaries, period. I haven't adjusted the full spreadsheet for this, but I just kind of glanced around D2 Foundry at the different archetypes, and a full body shot TTK of 1.17 is extremely fast in the new Crucible. Lightweights were not previously the best all body shot TTK sidearm, so this is a comparative buff and is one more reason why heliocentric is great for all players. And that was just PvP. In PvE, lightweight sidearms shine as some of the absolute best DPS primaries in the game. Just like the PvP disclaimer, they are obviously limited by their range in PvE too, but comparing DPS values from Mossy's outgoing damage spreadsheet shows lightweight, rapid fire, and adaptive burst sidearms to hit harder than anything outside of exotic primaries. On top of that excellent optimal damage, sidearms are also the most forgiving primaries in PvE as they have the lowest crit multiplier. A low crit multiplier means that the difference between your body shots and your headshots isn't going to be as big, which means you won't be punished as much for not being as skilled with it as opposed to other primaries where you lose a ton of damage for not hitting your headshots. Add this to the list of things that have blown my mind on this deep dive. It's no wonder we don't have a sidearm with destabilizing rounds because it would be glued to me this entire season. Okay, the second reason Heliocentric is universally deemed good and has become so popular is that it's new. At least from the standpoint of both the Crucible meta shift and this being the first season you can actually go get it somewhere in the game. This is the most obvious part of the equation, but it can make a big difference. It can't become popular if nobody has it. And the last time we had a new lightweight sidearm was seven seasons ago. Two years ago, we got the red back lightweight solar sidearm, which didn't even have any TTK shifting damage perks for PVP. You actually have to look back all the way to Season of the Splicer nearly three years ago at the Farewell sidearm to find a lightweight that had time to kill shifting damage perks. Farewell is the one that's been glued to my side for years, so I've been waiting a long time for this update. But then the season came and it was completely random on if you could get the sidearm to drop for you. There was no way to farm it, the random drop rates were super low, and even if you did manage to get one to drop, you'd have to face some terrible RNG odds that your roll was anywhere close to good. This season changed that. There are four groups of weapons that rotate daily as your reward for completing lost sectors on Legendary or Master. Heliocentric is in rotation 3 along with Last Foray, Hand in Hand, and Battle Scar. You do have to complete the activity solo for the drops, but if you complete it on Master difficulty, you have a guaranteed drop of one of these four weapons and it will drop with double perks in one of the columns, making farming the weapon really easy on a day where loot rotation 3 lines up with a fast and easy lost sector. A simple Google search will let you know which loss sector and rotation is up today, and sites like Blueberry's GG will even let you know if it's an easy one to farm for those amazing heliocentric perks. Which leads us to the third reason heliocentric is universally so good. It's got the perks. Mixing heal clip with damage perks is hot right now in both PvE and PvP. It's topping the Trials of Osiris charts on multiple weapons, and that's due to the massive buff it received that gave it 100% more healing power than before. In PvP, it makes heal clip actually worth using, giving you 60 HP with cure times 2 instead of the old 30 HP with cure times 1. And in PvE, it is essentially impossible to die in PvE as long as there are adds around as cure 2 will grant you 120 HP. Mix that with solar subclass fragments or exotics that boost your health and you're unstoppable. Then you're keeping your teammates alive the whole time too, as anyone nearby will be granted cure times one as well. We've also got the damage perks for all areas of the game. In PvE, incandescent for building into your solar subclass, that's a given. But we've also got surrounded, a 40% buff when surrounded by three enemies, one of the largest buffs in the game and 
perfect for a close range weapon. Combine either of these with heel clip and you're up close in the action, grabbing Radiant from all your solar headshots thanks to the Flint Striker artifact mod, even if you aren't on a solar subclass. In PvP, we've got the damage perks we've been missing on lightweight sidearms since Season of the Splicer. No wait, we've got even better damage than that. We haven't had kill clip on lightweight sidearms since Season 4 of Destiny 2 with Anonymous Autumn at the launch of Forsaken nearly five years ago. Getting a 25% damage buff on this sidearm brings it to an extremely fast 4 crit against any Brazil in 0.5 seconds, which multi-kill clip on Farewell can do too, but that huge 25% buff on Heliocentric lets you also 3 crit and 1 body up to 7 Brazil. It is much more forgiving and bouncing between heal clip and kill clip gives you comeback options with the fast 0.5 second TTK to create a very high ceiling of potential for all players. That ceiling gets even higher when you throw on precision instrument in PVP. If you are absolutely perfect, from the get-go, you've got that 0.5 second 4 crit potential off the jump. No kill needed, you just have to hit every shot and be in range. That range brings us to the next section, which is what god rolls you're actually looking for on Heliocentric. For the Heliocentric PvP god roll, I've personally landed on all range. I've played around with all of it, and going as far as full bore felt like it made a difference with the damage at the far end without hurting my ability to actually land the crits needed. I even tried a ton of range with perpetual motion to even out the stability and it did not make a difference for me. The range will make a difference. When I talk sidearms, I hear a ton of people say, Helio's great, but it can't compete with the range. I disagree, and I think the stats back that up. Heliocentric is less than half a meter difference in fall off distance from Drang. I think the recoil animation of Helio is the actual thing that's driving people away from using the sidearm at a distance, but it's for sure not the stats. That said, you do need the stats to compete, so I'd look for a range masterwork, full bore for the barrel, of course, hammer forge, extended barrel, or small bore will work too, and then accurize rounds for the magazine. If the animation of the sidearm bouncing up and feeling like it's gonna hit you in the face is giving you trouble, I wanna encourage you to stick with it. I actually hated lightweights when I first tried them, and I only stuck with them for the lightweight running bonus, but once I got it in my brain where the bullets went while holding down this auto rifle of a sidearm, the shots just started landing, and if you spec it out with this much range, they really will land for you. I hit things that make me gasp, especially when I'm cleaning up a kill outside of damage falloff. I just can't believe how much of a laser it is. Now, where you are in the skill range we've been talking about will determine the last two column perks you want to look for. Remember, it is great for every skill level, but I've split it up into three god rolls for three types of players. If you are a player who's just looking to secure that first kill, hill clip kill clip may not be the right role for you. I know it's super popular, but just think about it. You're looking for all the help you can get on that first elimination. So for the third column, I'd recommend moving target, rangefinder, or perpetual motion. Personal favorite of moving target, but everyone's going to be different here. Then for the fourth column, you definitely want to go with precision instrument to match. It's easy to be intimidated by precision instrument as a high skill perk, but it's really not. Think of it like Headseeker. You're just hitting shots and racking up bonus damage for when you do hit crits. With only one shot, one stack of precision instrument, you've changed the requirement of needing all crits for your optimal 0.67 second TTK to being able to hit as low as two body shots. I say as low as because precision instrument could shut off if you miss a shot in your stream of bullets, but still, there is no kill requirement for this buff. You just land shots and even body shots count. This pairs with the heliocentric origin trait, Nadir Focus, which is giving you a bit of extra range and accuracy for just holding down the trigger, whether you're hitting your shots or not. So perpetual motion, rangefinder removing target, paired with precision instrument, is absolutely the play for the player who's just looking to secure that first kill. The second kind of player will be somewhere in the middle of total possible skill ceiling for heliocentric, and that player is going to hands down want heal clip, kill clip. I could see an argument for incandescent if you're heavy in your solar build, or even adrenaline junkie if you've got a great grenade build, but outside of those two things, kill clip it is. You have that optimal 0.67 TTK if you play great. You have that 0.83 second TTK even if you miss half of your crits, and even if you miss everything, you've got the best all body shot TTK available for a primary. Then. 
When you come out on top of an intense duel, you've got heal clip to get you back in the fight and kill clip to make you even more deadly than you were before. This is the role I've landed on. I didn't even get all range. I couldn't grab the range masterwork, but compared to my other all range roles, I'd rather stick with heal clip kill clip because the chaining potential is just too good. The amount of 1v3s I have won in trials from this, as someone who does not come near to hitting all their crits, is insane. The third kind of player, the player that does hit all their crits, is gonna wanna go for heal clip precision instrument. I personally think the best players in the world should still go heal clip kill clip because no one is that good and chaining kill clip is an easier 4 tap, which top players are going to care about, but prove me wrong. Go get multiple kills in a row with that precision instrument 0.5 second 4 tap and tag me on Twitter with it. I would love to see someone going to town with this role of heliocentric. For the heliocentric PvE god role, you've got a ridiculous number of options. I'd still shoot for a lot of range, but I'll take massive reload stat boosts where I can. So Hammerforge for range and no stat negatives, but I could see reasons you'd go for nearly any of the others that gave pure stat boosts. Then I'd go Flared Magwell since it's such a massive plus 15 reload stat boost. Accurize would be fine here too. Then a range masterwork, but reload masterwork would be fine as well. Essentially anything between range and reload. I've just already got that plus 15 reload from flared, so I'm not worried about it. Third and fourth columns, just like PvP, become incredibly preferential in PvE depending on what you're looking for in your playstyle. In the third column, I can at least narrow it down to two options for you, heal clip or demolitionist. I'd push you towards heal clip as 120 HP for just reloading after a single kill is crazy, but I know we've got grenade fans out there. In the fourth column, you cannot roll a bad perk. I'm serious. All of these are helpful in PvE, and I can see a playstyle for each one. I'm personally landing on Surrounded as a 40% buff pairs perfectly with Heal Clip for getting in the action, doing crazy damage and getting out with my health back, but I see how you'd want to stack Kill Clip with that for the instant 25% damage buff. I can see solar builds with incandescent, grenade builds with adrenaline junkie to match demolitionist, frenzy to give you a 100 reload speed when you stay in the action to proc heal clip instantly, and even precision instrument because it pairs with the origin trait, nadir focus, giving you that extra range and accuracy as you hold down the trigger for extra damage with precision instrument. All great options, but like I said, I can't pass up that 40% damage buff with Surrounded. I hope this deep dive has brought you to a new understanding of Heliocentric and encourage you to grab one. Use a Lost Sector Tracker, do the Master version, and grab those double perk rolls. Thank you to all the new subscribers and everyone interacting with the videos this past month. I'm able to get more of these videos out thanks to you, and it's been fun to do it. I genuinely love breaking things down like this in Destiny, and thank you so much for giving me the encouragement to do it. This has been Legola Flash, until next time, GG.